Welcome to Open Frame, a podcast by PixieSet, the place for photographers and other creatives to have inspiring, honest, and uplifting conversations. Hi, Annie. Hello, Nadia. <laughs> Good morning, Sunday morning. How are you? I'm awake. Um, I have my hot chocolate. Um, feeling feeling quite awake. How are you doing? Yeah, no, I'm good. I've got my tea as well, ready for this conversation. But yeah, I'm excited to talk to you today. Me too. Um, I'm very excited because um, I've I haven't really heard anyone talk about this before in our industry. So I'm really uh, looking forward to chat to you about um, heartbreak and wedding photography. But before we do that. Um, I'd love for you to introduce yourself to our listeners. Um, who are you? Where are you? What do you do? Hi guys, so I'm um, Annie Poe Photography. Um, so I'm a wedding and couples photographer um, based out of um, the, well, London. Um, so I prim- primarily shoot weddings and couples and all things love essentially. Um, so yeah, I guess that, that's my business. Um, I can talk a little bit about my photography style so I'd love that go for it Um, I'd say in terms of my photography style it's quite vibrant I'm not really quite dark and moody or light and airy Um, but yeah I really do love color excuse me I love color so that really shows in um, my photography style Um, and I love taking beautiful portraits so you'll see a lot of that in my work um, that are quite intimate but I also try and make sure that it's quite natural looking so the couples look like they're comfortable with each other you know there's some joy laughter in there and intimacy um, so yeah that's my photography style I guess. Have you never fallen victim to the the trendy you know moody editing or the really bright editing have you just skipped the whole trend? Um, do you know what I always I guess a lot of photographers will be like this. I, I really do love the moody editing style. There's so many photographers mm. who I follow and I'm like, oh my gosh, maybe I should change my editing style to be a bit more moody. That's what a lot of people love. And, and I do love that. But I think for me, I found a style which I think is a little bit quite unique to what I do. And it's nice to be a bit different when, you know, there's a sea of people who who do alternative styles as well. So... Yeah, I think vibrance is nice. Um, and I think for me as well, something that I've been also quite conscious of in my editing style is um, how skin tones look. Um, and I've always wanted to make sure that there's a vibrance to skin um, and that what looks good on lighter or darker skin, um, well, it looks good on, on either essentially. So that's something that I'm quite conscious of and I think it's kind of molded my editing style as well yeah beautiful thank you um I I love vibrance too and I love reality when it comes to editing styles Mm. I really do um I think my favorite editing style which is what I do now I've I went through all the trends by the way (laughs) um I did all of them in like my 11 years now um but where I've landed now is just reality or at least I mean as close to reality yeah. as I can edit um and and not having a particular style or preset and I have to force that preset on every photo because it's my style but rather editing in a way that re- resembles reality like what what did these colors actually look like in real life um, when I stood in front of them instead of like forcing my my style on something so I I love that um, about your work as well and I love the topic you suggested for today um, which is so unique and and really important and something that is not talked about and thank you so much for suggesting it thank you for being open like and ready to talk about this because it's really delicate isn't it um we're talking about heartbreak and shooting weddings <laughs> today um while you you're going through heartbreak which is something that both of us have experienced and so many wedding photographers out there as well I'm sure 
And it's almost something you're not allowed to talk about in, in public in our industry because it's all good vibes around weddings, isn't it? Um, I'd love to know from you, like, what is your heartbreak story? Um, so I guess if I take it back to what I started weddings uh, or shooting weddings in 2018. Um, so I, I, I think I got my first camera in 2015. So I did start a little bit later. I wasn't one of those people who their granddad had a camera and Same. <laughs> I would take photos with my granddad or anything like that. But um, yeah, no, so I started in 2015. So I guess a bit of a background. Um, I have a I studied civil engineering at uni, um, so not anything creative, um, quite technical. Um, and when I graduated, I went into um, civil engineering and that, that was the role that I had. And at the time I wasn't necessarily enjoying um, the technical side of my job. Um, and I was doing quite a lot of traveling at the time. Um, mm -hmm. And I wanted to have a camera that I could document kind of the moments of my life and particularly I actually got my camera because I wanted something that I could take videos and films with and create little montages and then I was like actually I quite like taking photos um so yeah that's kind of how I started in terms of getting into photography then I did events and then I started doing weddings um, and then I just found that I really enjoyed that I loved the interacting with different people people it, it you know, weddings are the best days of people's lives, you know, in terms of the couple are super loved up. It's very romantic and all the families, um, you know, being so happy for the couple. I just, that I knew it's, it's a real life, happy uh, situation that I, I wanted to use my photography for. Mm -hmm. um, so that's essentially kind of how I started in um, photography. For a long time, I just really enjoyed documenting um, the love and all the happiness. Um, but I guess in, so yeah, throughout when I started, I was in a long-term relationship and um, that uh, obviously broke down and it was just a really difficult time where I broke up with my long-term partner and it was very difficult for me to I guess, be present in weddings and, um, you know, just not be, I guess, triggered by the mm -hmm. love and the kind of romance that was happening. And I think when you're going through a very particularly difficult time, um, it can be really difficult. You can be triggered by essentially by all the love and the happiness. And mm -hmm. um I think as human beings, we naturally uh, compare our lives as, as we see things. And um, it's easy for us to compare maybe our situation with what we're seeing. We're seeing the couple who are madly in love, um, everyone's saying beautiful things about them. And I think in your brain at the time, whilst you're shooting the wedding, you can be thinking, oh, is this ever going to happen for me again? Especially, you know, when you've been in a relationship before. Um, and if you're going through a healing process, it can be something that can maybe set you back on that or be really difficult to deal with. Mm -hmm. So I do remember at the time, um, it was actually, I remember particularly, there was, there was a couple shoot I was doing and the couple was super lovely, super romantic, saying sweet things to each other throughout the shoot. And I just remember being quite emotional and, and, and thinking that this was so beautiful. But I guess in my life at the time, I was thinking, oh, I don't know if, it, if this will ever happen for me. But yeah, it was just very difficult for me to be um, in that situ situation because photography is something where you have to be quite physically and emotionally present. I don't know if you find this as well. So you know, I'm not just shooting and just, I'm not a robot. I'm in tune with what the couple are saying to each other. I'm listening to the words. And, and if you're going through something difficult, it's something that can, you know, really highlight maybe what's kind of missing in your life. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, that was a very difficult time for me. 
absolutely oh, it's i yeah I, i'm with you on that you have to be so present with photography and you kind of have to mirror people's energy as well yeah right so when you're shooting a couple whether that's on the wedding or in a couple shoot they're usually the energy is really high oftentimes right it's really good energy they're they're in love and they're happy and excited about the shoot excited about their own thing and when you're not in that space like when you're in a space of grief mm. it's so so hard to you almost have to you have to give a performance a little bit yeah. you have to like fake it a little bit there were some instances for me when I was going through that where um actually their energy made me feel better yeah like it helped I don't know if you had a similar experience sometimes, um, depending on the day, it, it actually helped. But yeah, I remember oftentimes afterwards sitting, editing those pictures and just crying while I was editing. <laughs> mm. And while I was like looking at them, because um, this was really recent for you then. It was 2018 or 2019, I guess. So it's was, it was 2019. And I think, I guess a factor as well, when you, you know, doing wedding photography it is something which you know it's you, you're taking time out of your weekends and that if you're in a re long-term relationship that can impact how much time you can spend with someone um and I guess that can also be a contributing factor into maybe you know the dynamics and the kind of breakdown of relationships as well mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's something you have to be conscious of for definite and you know ensuring that you're with a partner who can understand that as well um but I think I guess going back to the weddings wedding days are essentially a highlight reel everyone is on a high yeah. um and yeah if, if you're not in a in a kind of mental state where you are also in a high as well it, it can be really difficult but you have to like you said you have to put your brave face on you're there for the couple and you need to shoot but it, it can be quite difficult especially once you leave that situation and then you're back to reality yeah. um, it's a reminder maybe of um, yeah the difficult things that you're going through um, but I think as well it, it I like what you were saying about it's not something that's talked about often. I think I've had conversations one on one with other photographers about it. Um, and there are online communities as well. There's loads of Facebook groups as well for photographers. But I, I do find it is a topic that I have seen in women only photographer groups that mm -hmm. okay. discuss a little bit more, um, or people have raised it and. Um, and talked about how it's affected them so mm. yeah I think it's something that a lot of photographers go through but we just don't talk about a lot of the time um nope. and what you just said about the highlight um that the wedding is a highlight of the relationship like it's a very very high heightened day mm. um that's exactly you know what when when I was going through that which was also 2019 um the the major part of it um I, I kind of was a little bit cynical about that while I was doing the weddings because I was like, this is just, this is just because it's a wedding, you know, like they have their issues and like, you know, wait, what's coming? Like, literally, I was like, I was like, partly like really cynical about it for a while, for a few months. Um, and then I would like, catch myself thinking that and think, well, <laughs> you know, it's, it doesn't, it just because this is very heightened and it's like the best day. I don't like saying the best day of their lives, but it's like a very, um, very beautiful uh, day for them. Um, doesn't mean that it's all fake or that, you know, they have a horrible relationship behind closed doors. Like I had to reel myself back, but for a while there, I was quite cynical when I was doing weddings while going through my divorce because I was like, it's just, it's just a highlight reel. It's just today. This is not real life. Yeah. <laughs> exactly the same. And I'm laughing because I remember catching myself as well, where I'd be, I'd literally 
I remember myself putting, you know, my eye to mm. the viewer and being like, oh, well, I, not, not in a, like a, I guess it was a little bit in a bitter way or in, in a cynical way thinking, um, you know, it's not always going to be this happy and, and thinking like, you know, yeah, just thinking quite negative thoughts. And, and, and that's not the kind of person that I am, but I guess when you are going through a breakup or a separation, you have a journey of emotions or a roller coaster of emotions. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, you feel quite hopeful and happy about what's happened. And then other times you feel quite, you know, sad. It's, yeah, it's a whole roller coaster. Every day can be different. And I definitely relate to that of feeling quite like negative or thinking, oh, yeah, this is just a highlight reel. You know, this, this, this is not the reality. Yeah. Um, which, yeah. Yeah. Well, it wasn't the nicest as well, but yeah, just to be honest, you know, about like what you're going through, because this is how it felt. And it was literally, like you said, a roller coaster, because at the same time, being at uh, certain weddings that year was also, it made me really hopeful. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. at some weddings, some couples, like the things that they were saying, the things other people were saying about them, how they were like, talking to each other yeah made me even though I was in a really sad dark place witnessing that made me like really hopeful and it it made me actually smile and it made me really happy um in my like circumstances so it was definitely a roller coaster sometimes it was like ah there was there was definitely cynicism yeah completely honest um, about that and I think it's such a human experience to to go through that mm -hmm. and sometimes it was like oh I'm so glad that this exists mm -hmm. and that I can see it yeah that this is possible this is possible for people and it could be possible for me too um so there's yeah as you said it's definitely a roller coaster um of emotions <laughs> Um, for me, like I, I, I left my marriage at the start of 2019, um, but I was shooting weddings with my husband, with my ex-husband um, for 10 years. And, and we were married for 10 years as well. And 2019, um, we separated at the beginning, but we still had that wedding season to do together. <laughs> so we were also shooting together um, all of 2019 while being um separated and like waiting for the divorce to go through and that was a very particular type of um pain <laughs> to like do these weddings together and uh, I'm sure you've had that maybe I mean I guess you were not married no I wasn't married but still like maybe some of the things said at weddings and stuff would remind you of certain things in your life and your relationship because I had that I I, you know, during the ceremony or the vows, I would remember my own vows, I would remember my own wedding or, or even other things that happened in the relationship. Um, and sometimes I, I would like, as you said, like I would literally zone out and like, start thinking about these things. And I had to like, talk myself back into the moment and be like, you have to work. <laughs> You can't, you can't do this. And it's really hard. It's really hard to do that while you're going through that. And sometimes I remember during the ceremony or the speeches, certain things were said and I would shoot and I would look at my ex-husband and he would look at me. And it was like, it was like so, so strange. And so it, it was just deeply sad. Yeah. Um, yeah, very, very difficult experience that I don't necessarily wish on anyone um, to go through. Yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, it was really hard. Did you, did you talk, um, did you tell your clients about like, that you had just gone, that you were going through a breakup? And did you say anything about that? I don't think I did at the time, actually. I think you know, as we were saying, you know, I, I didn't want to put my maybe sad or negative emotions onto my client because, you know, when, when you're at a couple shoot or if you're at a wedding, you don't want, this is the happiest day of your life. It, it's not about me. It's about them. And I want to yeah. 
be of service to them. So I think at the time I, I didn't want to, you know, bring down the mood or kind of detract from that because it's not about me. It's, a, it's about them having the best day of their lives and, and I'm part of telling that story. So at the time I didn't feel like I could say it. Um, I'm sure they would have been understanding, um, but I also wanted, I guess, in the weddings to feel that I could, or at least try to switch off and be like, okay, mm -hmm. this is the time when I can um, just kind of forget that part or try to forget that part of my life and just be present um, and, and be of service to my clients. So yeah, it's not something that um, I discuss with them, but maybe it, in hindsight at the time I could have, and yeah, I, I'm not sure if it would have made much difference. Um, mm -hmm. But. That must have been so lonely mm. to like be there and not being able to not talk about it because obviously you wouldn't like talk about it during the wedding day, but like to not know that all these hundreds, 200 or how many people are there, they don't know how you're feeling. You have to put on this, this happy face and this, energetic face and behavior but on the inside that's not how you're feeling yeah. that would be really lonely yeah so definitely it's something that I did talk about extensively with my really close friends mm. um, and other close photographer friends as well because they definitely understood but you know you know when you're in your place of work you have to kind of put your brave face on and and do the best but yeah I think particularly as well when when you're out of the wedding and you're at home and you're editing and you're going through all the images that can also be when you're alone I guess with your thoughts as well that can be quite a negative space as well um and and it is something that I guess because I because I have um my my day job which I do so I was fortunate enough that I did have to take a, a little break from photography just because mm -hmm. it was it's quite intense for me I, I I wasn't able I just felt like I wasn't giving my best service to my clients and I wanted to kind of have my healing process and then kind of come back with a vengeance once I felt better <laughs> um which is something that I did and, and that's that's something that not all photographers particularly you know if you're if you're full-time um you don't have the luxury of doing you you need to um, keep you know showing up at weddings and and shoots and and um yeah you know, to, to kind of maintain um your your job and your that stream of income as well so yeah. you know that's something that I had the I guess the privilege of but not everyone has that um opportunity to do that mm. I think as well something that it's not just romantic relationships I guess that can be quite triggering uh, in terms of weddings but I think it's also I have seen um, and talked to other photographers about even family dynamics you know at weddings you're seeing you know families in having great time and if oh, yeah. you know, really have you know a, a similar or happy family dynamic that can also be triggering as well and that's something that's not talked about or thought about as well that is so true that is very very true it can actually trigger a lot of childhood stuff as well yeah. And it's such a complex situation. You're there, you have to work. You're like documenting this amazing day. And then suddenly you're hit in the face with something with like some reminder of trauma or like, that is so true. There's, there's loads of triggers at weddings. <laughs> Definitely. Um, that is so, so true. Yeah. I think ultimately with myself, um, time, I guess with everything, time is the biggest healer. and you know, as I healed and I felt better, like ultimately I got into weddings because I love love and I love documenting, mm -hmm. um, you know, real life moments of happiness. And that, that's why I was able to pivot back and, and come back to weddings and, and give it my all. And, you know, when I, when I go to weddings now, I still feel that joy of particularly if I'm in the speeches and you're hearing the story of the couple and maybe trials and tribulations that they've gone through. Um, I love that. So, mm -hmm. you know, that, that was a phase of my life. Um, but now I, I'm back at weddings and um, 
I just yeah I love everything about them and, and the happiness um, and that's infectious to me and I love that and that like you were saying before it's something that can give yourself hope um, and um, yeah it's, it's a beautiful thing to see as well. So. It is, it's, it is a beautiful thing to witness, um, even if, yeah, it is, you know, a highlight day and you don't know people's private lives um, just to a certain extent, but it is, yeah, I, I, as you said, like, I love love. That is just so a beautiful way to put it because that's what it is. It is just beautiful to be able to witness that. And you know what, like when I, um, when Eddie and I separated, I did tell my clients, um, all my wedding couples for, of that year, because, and I think there's the, the difference was we were shooting weddings together. Yeah. So we did, they, for maybe the consultation or whatever, they knew Eddie, they knew about him, they knew we were doing this together. So in their minds, it was like, oh, this, this married couple is coming to our wedding. And um, uh, we were like a unit um, in front of them. So um, they knew us as a couple. Um, so that's why I told them for one, because I wanted to avoid like the awkwardness um, of them. You know, you're there at the wedding at whatever, at the getting ready or at the portrait shoot and I'm there and he's there. And, and then they're making a comment maybe about us and like, but we're not together anymore. Like I wanted to avoid that. Um, and some people could argue, but it's more awkward if, you know, they know that you're not together. But I, I don't personally, I didn't feel like that. Yeah. I, I thought it was so much more freeing that they knew um, and that they wouldn't say anything like that would be awkward, you know, for everyone. Like, uh -huh, yeah, <laughs> like where we have to pretend. I don't like pretending. So I was like, I, I'm not. But that's because, yeah, we were at the wedding together, which was um, not the not the thing in your in, in your case um so for one i wanted to avoid that um to have any awkward moments i just wanted them to know so it's out there mm. um and when we both rock up they kind of know um and it's okay and then the other reason i i just thought you know what um i am human <laughs> and i'm going through a human experience yeah um and it's fine for my clients to know um, because my clients, most of them will know heartbreak as well. They've experienced it too. They know what it feels like, unless sometimes you have that couple, they've been together since they were 13 <laughs> and they've never been with anyone else. So they might not know that in, in that way, but they know what it feels like. And it's fine. Um, it's fine, you know, to let them know. Um, I guess, I guess, yeah, I just wanted to be seen as human like and if if I had maybe like a second where I wasn't like performing or whatever I just I just wanted that to be okay as well in a way um but yeah it was obviously mostly because the dynamic was oh we're a husband and wife team so I kind of felt like I had to let them know um because there were a few like awkward moments for sure like with wedding guests when they ask you stuff about you as a couple while you're there shooting or I don't know if you've had any awkward moments while you were going through that like wh whether that's with your clients or with guests. Um, I guess in general though if everyone's not necessarily always at weddings but if everyone's mm -hmm. known you to be in a relationship people automatically ask oh how is so-and-so or um yeah you know, just kind of ask about you know and that and it's a bit awkward when you have to then say oh actually you know um I'm not in this relationship anymore um so yeah I get I guess the, the awkward moments do definitely happen. oh yeah um, yeah when they're like oh so how long have you been together how long have you been married when I <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's so so awkward sometimes um but yeah, my, hmm? do you think it was, is that a contributing reason for you as to perhaps why you pivoted away from weddings, um, that situation in your life? That my divorce? Yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> um, it, it definitely isn't. I can, I can say that uh, with my whole chest. Um, I pivoted from weddings because that's a whole, that's a, another podcast, but um, because 
um, I did destination weddings for like 10 years. And it was really tiring. I was really, really physically affected and mentally affected. And then even like with doing local weddings, um, I just started to get um, tired of them. Yeah. Um, I still I still love weddings as a guest. Like I love going to a wedding as a guest, um, which I haven't in a long time, but um, I'm not cynical about them at all. Um, but um, what I started noticing after 10 years was that um, whenever I was at a wedding, I felt like I was on the set of a movie. <laughs> like everything, everything like repeats itself. Every, there's like different stages. Now we do this, now we go there and we do this. And now we now this part. And it was like the set of a movie and there were very, very few weddings. I mean, maybe one or two weddings in my life that felt like they had a really, really organic flow. Mm. But yeah, oftentimes it's like you have these different stages and I got, I started getting really resentful with couples for, for doing things in a very mindless way. Like just, we just do this cause that's what you do, right? Like yeah. not thinking about it, not questioning anything, just going with it because that's what mom wants or, and yeah, towards the end of it, I was really, really just had zero joy at weddings left. Um, and I was like, I have to, I have to stop. This is not, it's not good for me. And it's also not fair to people because if I can't do this job with my whole heart, uh, I shouldn't be there. I shouldn't be doing this because it's such an important day for people. Um, and if I can't do it with love, I, I have no business being there. <laughs> so um yeah, that was, those were kind of the main reasons. It was, it was um, all very exhausting and kind of, I was like starting to question everything. Um, so that's, yeah, that's a whole different story, but it, it had nothing to do with my divorce at all. I still believe in love. I, I still believe in marriage. I don't think marriage is the issue. People are the issue. It's not marriage itself. Mm. It's like, it's people, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's kind of uh, what what how why it happened for me really, um, in that way. But you still love shooting weddings. Yep, I do. Yeah, I guess I've kind of healed from that time in my life, and well, I'm in, in a new amazing relationship now. Oh, um, so that's amazing. Yeah, I, it's happened for me. So. Yeah. I get, yeah, like I said, I, I do, weddings are, that, that's the whole reason. So I, I used to do event photography when I started and I just felt like, you know, there wasn't the kind of human interaction or the kind of beautiful story as there is in a wedding day. And um, that's why I still, I still love to shoot them because... Amazing. I don't know, I feel like I'm a bit of an extension of um, the family on the day and I get to see the whole story from beginning to end of a wedding day. And yeah, I, I, I still really, I really enjoy them. So that's beautiful. And it's, it's never, you know, it's never been like, the issue has never been the people, like my clients, they were really lovely. And um, gosh, yeah, I, I really had amazing clients and um as you said as well like getting to know the family and all of the people in their lives um it was really enriching yeah the issue was the weddings themselves like the system like how do we do weddings why do we do it like this um the program the whole like you know the system like that was the issue for me not not the people they were lovely I, I don't know if any of my older clients, like old clients that are listening to this, I'm not like dragging them at all. They were amazing. Um, they really were. It was the whole system, like of like the wedding day and stuff that really, really got to me. Um, and yeah, it was just um, time to stop, I guess. But I agree with you. Like the, it's, it's the people that make it, like that make it beautiful. In 2019, while I was doing weddings with my ex-husband, um, I was like in therapy almost every week. <laughs> um, and then obviously, yeah, I stopped anyway. But what 
what is your personal advice from your experience how to deal with heartbreak like with the grief how to deal with all these emotions um while you have to photograph love yeah. at the same time um i think as well yeah my my situation is quite different because obviously i do photography alongside another job so i did have the privilege of being able to kind of take myself away mm -hmm. and, and not take on new inquiries and jobs for a little while whilst I was in that healing process but I think yeah time is definitely the biggest healer as well and I think talking about it in photography communities with your friends as well because a lot of the time you won't realize that you know there's a lot of other photographers who are feeling the exact same way mm -hmm. um so I think talking about it that really helped me um and like we were talking about before as well reminding ourselves that weddings it is an intense positive highlight reel of a day you know we're not privy to seeing um the, the difficulties and, and the struggles that um, some couples go through or or different families go through we're seeing everyone kind of at their happiest so just reminding yourself of that um, and yeah if it is possible as well take if, if you if you can take that time out and and if you are highly being triggered by um, shooting couples and, and weddings then I think it it's best to probably just maybe take yourself away from that if you if you're able to do that. I know that there are other photographers who have also pivoted and maybe um, pivoted into other types of photography, whether that's brand photography, um, maternity, or other um, options like that. Um, so I think you know that's something as well. But just just reminding yourself of you know this is the happiest day of their lives and um, rem reminding yourself of why you got into photography. Because for me, you know, I, I love love and I love seeing the beauty of that and reminding yourself, you know, there are couples out there who are truly in love. And um, yeah, I think just reminding yourself of, of what the reason was that you, you got into it again. That's beautiful. Those are really, really good tips. Thank you so much. I love like, Yes, reminding yourself of the why, talking about it with others, um, obviously, you know, doing your healing work, but also talking about it honestly in the industry, mm -hmm. is, like that is so important because yeah, there's, most of us go through this at some point in life and just to pretend it's not happening doesn't serve anyone. That's, that's why I'm so happy that we could have this conversation today and I hope kind of it inspires more conversations like that um because yeah we think oh we don't want to bum our clients out or <laughs> like yeah. or prospective clients you know let's say you talk about this on socials as a wedding photographer and maybe prospective clients hear this what will they think you can't just ruin the mood <laughs> or stuff like that but I think um honesty always resonates with people um in one way or another I love I love those tips um also like yeah taking a break if you can or accepting other photography jobs um I think uh if it is if it feels right for you uh I would encourage people to tell their clients as well um just so they know oh this is why you know they are um not high energy today or you know this is why it's okay like if, if it feels right for you I think it has to be like it has to feel right for you to tell people Uh, that you work with um, you don't have to of course and I also think to be honest it might help to if you can't take a break and you obviously have to do your work and you have to do your weddings and you can't just cancel um, to maybe take someone with you on that day to have like a second shooter and a photographer friend there that so the load is split but also once in a while you can debrief <laughs> you can like you know when you, you can take a break and talk to an, another person that understands you. Um, if, if Since nobody obviously um, at the wedding knows and, and nobody, you, you know, it's just have that person that can relate to you. I think 
that might be a good idea if if that's possible yeah i i definitely agree with what you're saying about i guess the point about telling your clients i don't think if you don't want to divulge i guess all the details but you know it's fine to tell your client you know what i'm feeling a bit like down today or something's happening in my life where i'm feeling a bit low energy or you know you can give as much detail as you want but you, you can let your clients know in um in a different way and I definitely agree as well on the point about um, having a second shooter because especially in high wedding season when you're she shooting a lot of weddings mm. when you're physically and mentally exhausted I just love having a second shooter um to kind of you know if, if you're not feeling as energetic someone to kind of motivate you um and and just help you throughout the day and, and debrief as well like you were saying so you know exactly. I totally agree absolutely absolutely and with telling your clients for example it's the same thing with other things if you're grieving for other reasons mm. let's say there's a death in the family yeah um I know so many I had to shoot two weddings um <laughs> while um um a friend of mine and a, a family member on a different occasion had like the funeral at the same time um and I was like really far away and I couldn't go and at one wedding I actually got the news that um a friend of mine died during the wedding mm. and um obviously during the wedding you don't really you know it doesn't it's not really it doesn't really work telling anyone but uh, I know so many wedding photographers who go through the grief and just they just keep working and they put their head down and um, which is you know you have to do that I understand but they they don't tell anyone and I think it's okay again to sit to just say it you know hey I just want you to know um that's what I did I was like I'm uh you know I'm going through a divorce um since we're both shooting your wedding I just wanted you to be aware that's it like I didn't go into emotional details and stuff and then I found that a lot of my clients they wanted to talk about it you know they were like oh wow like and they asked questions and and they asked me if I was okay and they were super sweet um uh, but yeah I didn't give any details I just said this is a fact mm. <laughs> you know just just um so that you're aware since we're both shooting your wedding and I think that's fine to say hey you know my grandpa my my mother died or whatever it is like I think it's okay to have that human connection uh, with your clients um, and and for them to know um, kind of thing uh, but again it, everyone has to feel comfortable in within themselves to do that yeah, <laughs> Annie thank you so much uh, for chatting to me this morning thank you for like being honest and open willing to talk about this no worries at all um, I think yeah, for me, it's not something that I've widely talked about in a public mm. platform, but I do think having these conversations is really important because, like we're saying, it's not something that's widely talked about. And I know a lot of photographers can relate to what we've discussed or going through the same situation. So I think hopefully it helps people um, if they're in that situation as well. So thank you so much for having this conversation. Thank you. Uh, it was a pleasure. And I was thinking this would be a very interesting conversation to have in a panel as well with like more people. Yeah. And just just uh, exchange um, all of that humanity. <laughs> um, but I'm so glad we could have that. And I hope it inspires more conversations like that because we all go through this at some point. Yeah, but it, it can be really lonely and painful to have to shoot weddings when grieving a relationship so um thank you for being open you're amazing nice. thank you so much nadia enjoy your sunday thank you